of the congregation, fellow lions. It is fitting and proper, we who have enjoyed the fellowship of in lionism of our friend lions Fitz Clarence Waldrop, that we mark his demise together. Lion Waldrop joined our club on the 27th of April, 1983. He was a chartered member, a Melvin Jones fellow, and held the of President and Director. Lion Waldrop also served on many committees of the Lions Club of Sandy Grande. As a founding member of this honorable club, we owe it to our departed colleague to ensure that this club continues to live up to the ideals of lionism, to serve, especially those in our community. It was for that purpose he and other like-minded persons formed the Sandy Grandi Lions Club. No doubt, selflessly. We shall miss his presence at our meetings and his assistance in our programs of service. We acknowledge the obligation that he leaves with us, that we carry on, each of us, with greater zeal. We mourn the passing of our friend and gather now in solemn mood. We know all things of time must end, even what to us seems wholly good. 
fellowship we have had in service. Say farewell and carry on the work below, believing that the time will come when we will once more say hello. I will now ask all the members of the Sandy Grand Lions Club to please stand. We, the members of the Lions Club of Sandy Grandi, gather to pay our respects to the earthly remains of our fellow lion. Lyons Fitzclarence Walter. As we prepare to return his body to the earth from which he came, we earnestly pray that God will look down with love and mercy upon those left behind and give comfort and strength to his beloved family. May our dear Lion, Lion Fitz, rest in eternal peace. Pleasant morning to each and everyone. Let me first say thanks to the Almighty God for putting all of us here today on his wake up list so that we can come and celebrate the life of Mr. PNM. On behalf of the Toko Electoral District. My family and I, our deepest condolences go out to the Waldrop family. Folks, today I am here to pay tribute to a man who have been politics. Mr. Waldrop had lost a lot of favor with some of the people in Toko when he introduced me into politics. It was nice, some of the remarks they make towards him. I was not known From Matura to Granivier. In Matlot, everybody knew Terry. I born and grew there. And I remember I doing Santa Claus in Matlot. And while sitting there giving toys, I see this big man coming up to me. So in my mind, I say, Where are you going? He coming for toys, a big man like that. He came to me and say, I would like to speak to you. And afterwards he was saying, I like what you're doing. At that time they were looking for a candidate. He said, I would like you to put yourself up to be the counselor for the area. Right? I don't even know what, what he's talking about. He took me to a lady, you know the lady, Northeastern, they are taking you to a lady there to introduce you. But the lady don't know already what he is doing, taking some man from Matlot to go up at the counselor. And as we reach, she was the security guard, MTS, Miss Douglas, look, I bring a man here for you. She don't know. 
She said, man, will you get that man? You take that man for yourself. Or look go from here. And we had to leave. But what Wally is saying to me, if that lady is for you, she for you. I say, Wally, she here for both of us. Wally invite us, my family, to his home. And when we reach there that night, rain, rain, and we sat down, and Marie prepared, and I tell you all, anytime you want somebody to say yes, cook the yes food, macaroni pie, red bean, and chicken. And we had that, and my family say yes to all job. Yes. My wife and me going down back, she said, Terry, what we found ourselves in. And Wally make sure. But I, I tried to not to go up, not to go. So I met him, say you're ready. Next next two weeks in screening. I said to Wally, I don't have no money to buy no clothes. Wally put your hand in his pocket, give me money to buy. Mr. Waldrop do everything on the face of the earth that I supposed to be the counselor. Folks, the only six people walk with me. The people in Togo didn't want me at all, at all, at all. Six. And out of the six, two are alive today. All the rest. We have German and Chanel. Remain with me. And I walk. So, Waldrop bring me some money into my house. They were very close. But Ashton Ford, they all pushed for me to go. And when I won the election, Mr. Waldrop gave me this tie. If you all notice, this is not the modern day PM tie, you know. These 27 years. This morning I sat and I watched the suit, the shirt. I couldn't put it on because if I'd come here today, they'll say, you're looking disgraceful. The shoes, 27 years. And I watch all my different plaque and paper clipping. And I tell my wife, this, Mr. Waldrop. I went up first Korea and I addressed 3,000 personnel. Peace. I went on the peace journey. Mr. Waldrop. I've gone places. I've done things. And when he gave this tie to me, he said to me, Terry, don't disappoint me. And I could ask the church today that if you all believe I ever disappoint the man. I didn't disappoint him. And I will say to the children, his wife, I am here. Your father, your husband, to the brothers and sisters, your brother, your sister, have Terry Rondon where he is today. All the popularity that I gain fits Clarence Walter. I am grateful to you all. Grateful to you all. Anything I can do to help you all, I will do it. Why? I, I would have never, the name Terry Rondon with her, just anybody else. I've reached a stage in my life to Mr. Waldrop. Waldrop. And he went through a lot, a lot, a lot for me. So folks, I want to thank the PNM family, the people of Sandy Grandi, Toko, for accepting me. And to the family, I say thank you, thank you, thank you.
famous author A. Sachs once said, death is more universal than life. Everyone dies, but not everyone lives. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to celebrate the life of Fitz Clarence Waldrop, a husband, father, brother, grandfather, uncle, activist, comrade, lion, and friend. Fitz Clarence Waldrop lived. The scripture passage, Ecclesiastes 3 states, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. Fitzy, Wally, Nathan Burdett, Geronimo. Indeed, his names were many. Daddy did everything within his season on earth. This is why he will live on in the hearts and minds of others, especially those of you gathered here today. Fitzclarence Waldrop was born on October 24, 1943, to David and Agnes Waldrop, and he was the third of seven children. He grew up in Quastres, Upper Sangre Grande, a son of the soil. He was introduced to agriculture at an early age, tending to short crops, livestock, and cocoa. I grew up mining Betsy the cow and the moss and cocoa, he would tell my sister, Leanne, and me. We would be intrigued by the stories of his youth and on how hard he worked in the fields with his family. I used to help Ma and Pa. From since, I, from since then, I was a warrior in the bush, he used to tell us. Agriculture, the famed bush science. Fitzclarence always had the desire to uplift himself. And when the time was right, he took the initiative to concrete his authority as an agricultural expert. He went on to pursue studies at the Eastern Caribbean Institute of Agriculture and Forestry, Ekiaf campus in Centennial, where he obtained a diploma in agriculture. Boy, I loved Ekiaf. These fellows were my brothers. Imagine your brothers will make you kiss a pig as initiation, he told us laughing. But Ekiaf was more than initiation in daddy's formal educational journey. His newfound credentials became his ticket to a beautiful and illustrious career in agricultural extension. The farmer's champion, the one with all the know-how, the charismatic traveling officer. From Bish to Barapo, Toko to Tobago, he plied his rubber boots, teaching farmers how to grow rice, cocoa, and more. Wally, a good man. But behind every good man is a good woman. He would go on to marry the beautiful Anne Marie, and they had two daughters. Annie and Fitzy boy, <laughs> two lovebirds, chalk and cheese, the Gaza and the Gully, Romeo and Juliet. Everyone who knew them knew they loved each other regardless. And they worked hard for the community of Sangre Grande. Passionate and filled with compassion, he loved his brothers and sisters. Millie, Clement, Rendo, Fredo, Merle, Harold, David, Francis. He used to talk about them all the time. He claimed he was a bajan and he could fight and that anybody come up against them, his family, in-laws and friends, he will defend like a boxer in the ring. A defender indeed. He would defend his party, the PNM, in every election. And he was the life of the party in every celebration. A live wire, always ready to crack a joke, like Broadmouth and Big Belly. Oh, how Leanna and I loved his comedic stories. But sometimes his jokes weren't always funny to mommy. Fitz Clarence Waldrop, a bright fella, the people in the Cocoa Fraternity used to call him. He managed large estates and won the respect of both professors and pedestrians. As a member of the Trinidad and Tobago Cocoa and Coffee Industry Board, he traveled the world. As I said before, a man for all seasons. From a big ship in Germany, sampling dark chocolates with Miss Rollins and Kamal, 
to an ICCO meeting in London, to an agricultural training in Japan, Mr. Waldrop left his indelible mark far and wide. You know what they used to call me in Tobago? I was the king of Kings Bay, you know, he would say while working on cocoa estates in Tobago. In Alliance meeting, he was a mandingo, with many pre presidential stints under his belt, as well as that of other community councils. He loved cricket and cried long tears when West Indies lost a match. He loved carnival and would go to Panorama with Alloy and the team, although his ears used to ring days after. He loved his grandchildren, Adrienne, Amaris, and Anais, and his sons-in-laws, Andre and Winsy, and he boasted about them. He would always find time to catch up with his in-laws, always in contact with Junie, and playing a father role for Miga. Not to mention in his older years, sharing a laugh with his mother-in-law, Mary. His nieces and nephews loved his easygoing nature, Jillian, Tony, and Vaughn, and the others. A grassroots man, the people's champion. He would come home from a hard day working in Tamana and sit on the ground in his backyard garden and admire his mango and fig trees while eating raw bird pepper. A pepper mouth indeed. Daddy had a quick tongue, always ready for debate and conversation with friends. Not an easy one to back down in any argument. From a cocoa farmers meeting to a PM convention and even a Lions Club sitting, Daddy would get his point across. You had to stop and listen. A humble disciplinarian. Leanne and I had to listen. He never wanted to spare the rod and spoil the child. He even invented adjectives like dotishness, and his signature sentence was, listen to me. He taught us great values, lessons. In Leanne's words, I asked Daddy for a bike, and he gave me a bucket. He said, all those leaves here, pick it up, and the salary will be a dollar a leaf. Nothing comes free. I took this lesson to heart, amongst others which he instilled in my sister and me. A philanthropist to the bone, Mr. Waldrop was involved in mentorship and religious instruction such as retroviral training. A politician, as I mentioned earlier, his human service to the People's National Movement earned him a long-standing medal some years ago. In later years, though, life would become harder. The cheerful voice calling out to Michael to paint the sidestep in the wee hours of Christmas Day became silent. And his good neighbors had to support him rather than attend his parang get-togethers. His brother became his keeper. His in-laws, his light beyond the tunnel, and his wife, his prayerful backbone. In the end, just as daddy cared for the people, the people cared for daddy. Hmm. So much to say. So many medals to mention. Like when he played football and cricket, and when he planted acres of cocoa and created strides in sheep farming. But certainly, this is not enough time to celebrate the life of a man who many love dearly. Who with his infectious charm was certainly no saint. A man who loved God, but claimed he knew more than a priest. Who some feared and others called their partner. But amidst the good times and the bad, I leave with you a scripture reading. According to Fitzclarence Waldrop, Daddy, put it in your pipe and smoke it. Matthew 7, verse 1 to 2. Judge not, so that you will not be judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you.
Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Fitzclarence died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share eternal glory with him. Amen. Amen. Let's just invite the Holy Spirit to be with us as the Spirit of Consolation. Holy Spirit, we, we welcome you. Let us pray. O God, who have set a limit to this present life so as to open up an entry into eternity, we humbly beseech you that by the grace of your mercy you may command the name of your servant, Fitzclarence, to be inscribed in the book of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us be seated for the first reading. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. With God at our side, who can be against us? Since God did not spare his own son, but gave him up to benefit us all, we may be certain after such a gift 
that he will not refuse anything he can give. Could anyone accuse those that God has chosen? When God acquits, could anyone condemn? Could Christ Jesus? He not only died for us, he rose from the dead. And there at God's right hand, he stands and pleads for us. Nothing, therefore, can come between us and the love of Christ. Even if we are troubled or worried or being persecuted or lacking food or clothes or being threatened or even attacked, these are the trials through which we triumph by the power of him who loved us. For I am certain of this, neither death nor life no angel, no prince, nothing that exists, nothing still to come, not any power or height or depth, nor any created thing can ever come between us and the love of God made visible in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Mary, the sister of Lazarus, went to Jesus, and as soon as she saw him, she threw herself at his feet, saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. At the sight of her tears and those of the Jews who followed her, Jesus said in great distress, with a sigh that came straight from the heart, Where have you put him? They said, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. And the Jews said, See how much he loved him. But there were some who remarked, He opened the eyes of the blind man. Could he not have prevented this man's death? Still sighing, Jesus reached the tomb. It was a cave with a stone to close the opening. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha said to him, Lord, by now he will smell. This is the fourth day. Jesus replied, Have I not told you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing my prayer. I knew indeed that you always hear me, but I speak for the sake of all these who stand around me, so that they may believe it was you who sent me. When he had said this, he cried in a loud voice, Lazarus, here, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with bands of stuff and a cloth round his face. Jesus said to them, unbind him, let him go free. Many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what he did believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We gather as Christians thanking God, thanking Jesus for the victory won over death. Yes, we gather celebrating. Fitzclarence's life. But more importantly, what we gather is we celebrate the victory that has been won for us. Without this, we would live as those St. Paul criticizes who say, well, there, there's nothing beyond death. We would live in despair. But with this, we can grieve in a different way. Yes, we will grieve and yes, we will mourn our loss. But we know death is not the end. In Jesus Christ, there is life, there's resurrection, and it puts things into perspective for us to realize this is not all that there is. That our very being mortal is fading away, and there's much more. The first reading invites us to see the story, to see this reality through the lens of love as the interpretive key. St. Paul tells us that God is on our side. God is the one who's fighting for us. God is the one out of love, in other words, who has created us, who has sustained us through life. And it's those hands of love we return to when we die. So why are we worried? That's what he's saying. Who can be against us? The extent of his love is God pours out his very self and his son for us. And what Paul is inviting us to is relationship with Christ. He's inviting us to see, as he himself says in, in Galatians and in Romans, the very words we began with, in the waters of baptism, in baptism we die with Christ and rise with him to new life. That promise has been given to each and every one of us. The question is, what do we do with this offer of love, this offer of a gift? 
How do we live our own lives? Responding to the gift of God in our lives. When God acquits, could anyone condemn? Could Christ Jesus know? Not only did he die for us, he rose from the dead and is there at God's right hand pleading for us. In other words, God is doing everything for us to be with him. Everything. And that's why we, we gathered asking the mercy of God that God would forgive Fitzclarence's sins and welcome him into his divine paradise. But we gather too looking at how do we respond to that invitation? Because all of this is it's good news, yes. But it requires a response for, from us. An offer denied is not an offer accepted. And therefore, unless we take advantage of this, unless we open our hearts, unless we change our ways, unless we yield to that love, God wants a relationship with us. And nothing will come between us and that love. Death, life, angel, prince, nothing that exists, nothing still to come, not any power or height or depth, nothing can come between us and the love of God. An offer of love for each and every one of us. Funerals are moments for us to take stock of our lives. The psalmist tells us in Psalm 90 verse 12, Lord, give us wisdom that we may know how short life is. Life circumstances, the, the, the vulnerability, the anxieties of life, the uncertainties of life, they teach us this as well, that life is short. We don't know what will happen at any time. But how do we live? Do we live thinking this is all? Or do we live really entering into that offer of love? That offer of love that comes to us in Christ Jesus. How do we live? In the gospel, and the gospel is a journey to faith that each and every one of us is invited to. Jesus' friends, and, and Jesus says to us, I call you friends, so this is like us. Jesus' friends are suffering a great loss. His own friend has died, Lazarus. And he goes there, and Mary says, just as we may be saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother, my father, my spouse, my uncle, my friend would not have died. Lord, if you had been here. And Jesus wept. But he's inviting them as he invites us to see something much more. To see something much more. That he is the resurrection and the life. And that there's something more in store for us. If we could see it. And that requires faith. Faith. Jesus invites them to take away the stone. He comes to that tomb, that place of death. And the very place of death is where he brings life. Where he brings life. What are the stones in our, in our own lives that are places of death? Places where there's much burden. And Jesus is inviting us, do not worry, it'll be okay. Take away the stone, I am with you. The cry of Jesus for Lazarus to come out is a cry that will resound when each and every one of us dies. He will invite us, he will call us forth into the kingdom. But what is important here is for us to see the symbolism. He came out hand and feet bound, his bands of stuff, cloth round him. And Jesus says, unbind him, let him go free. There are many ways in which we hold on to the dead. And Jesus says to us, unbind them. They're now with me. Let go. Let them into my arms. What are you holding on for? Unbind him, Jesus says. Let him go free. There's an invitation for us that if we understand the love of Christ, then we release the person who has died. We release them into the arms of God. And that's a journey we have to make. It's a journey of coming to know that love of Christ. That actually, when our hands are clenched and we want to hold on, hold on to memories and experiences, the ups and downs, all that has filled the dramatic narrative of our lives, 
that Jesus says, trust in my love and allow my love to open your hands and let him go free. Let him go free. Do not hold on. It is with that that we don't think we don't grieve. It is with that that allows us to grieve even more, trusting in the love of God. And many, the gospel testifies, many came to believe because they had seen the power of God. Many came to believe. I invite you to trust in that love. I invite you not just to trust in that love of God for us, but to open your hearts to relationship with God, to yield to that love, to allow that love to change your life and my life so that we could become better versions of ourselves and more and more like Jesus Christ. I invite you in trusting in that love to allow as time goes on to experience grief as an unbinding and letting the loved one go free. They don't disappear from us, but they come to a different place in our lives. A place knowing that those arms of love that sustain us now hold him. Now hold him. What is your response to this love? Mother Teresa said, death is simply going home. Death is simply going home. There is no need for us to be afraid. Unbind him. Let him go free. What can separate us from the love of God? Neither death nor life. No angel, no prince. Nothing that exists. Nothing still to come. No power or height or depth. Nothing created can come between us and the love of God made visible in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let's just close our eyes. That offer of love, those arms of love that sustain Fitzclarence and now holds him, those arms of love stand before us, inviting us into deeper love. Those arms of love tell us it will be okay. Let him go free into my arms. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. My chains are gone, have been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace my chains are gone my chains are gone have been set free my God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. We praise you and we bless you, O God. Bless your name. We, we glorify and magnify you. Lord. Lord. We, we praise you, O God, God, for your love. Your we worship you and thank you, O God. We lift your name on high, O God, for your goodness and your mercy in your favor. We worship and we bless you, O Abba Father. Praise you, Father, Son, and Spirit. We praise you, O God, for your goodness. We praise you for your grace, O God. We praise you for your mercy, O Lord. Praise you, Jesus. 
Jesus. Glory and praise, praise, praise you, Father, Lord, Son, and Lord. Spirit. Praise, praise Lord, your Jesus. God. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Amen. We come before the Lord now with our prayers of intercession and let us stand. Trusting in the mercy of God, we turn to God our love and Father, bringing the intentions deep in our hearts before the Lord. For our brother, who ate the bread, the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, Lord, hear us. For our deceased relatives and friends, and we remember all those in our families who have died. And for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, Lord, hear us. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. We remember those who have died because of crime and violence and disasters, those who have died because of COVID, those who have taken their own lives. Forgive them their sins, O oh God, and welcome them into your divine paradise. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For each and every one of us, family, friends, those who mourn, that we may be consoled in our grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That we may take heed to the offer of relationship with Christ, our Savior, that we may not procrastinate our relationship with God, but that we may indeed enter into deeper relationship and experience a life that flows from the love and Savior. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And for all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our collection.
Praise sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. I accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be near, O Lord, we pray to your servant Fitzclarence, on whose funeral day we offer you the sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to him, or any human fault have affected him, it may by your love and gift be forgiven and wiped away. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. You lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ our lord in him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come indeed for your faithful lord life has changed not ended and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven and so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and given thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O oh Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jason, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Fitzclarence, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom the, the power, power, and the, the glory, glory are yours, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy that, that you should, should enter, enter under, under my, my roof, roof. But, but only say, say the, the word, word and my soul, soul shall be healed.
future in your hands, in your hands. We bid you take over all our lives, Lord. Our dreams, aspirations, all our best, Jesus, Lord. Our hopes, our fears, in your hands. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant Fitzclarence, who has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
before we go our separate ways. Let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Fitzclarence in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our brother forever. Amen. We gather to commend our brother Fitzclarence to God our Father and commit his body to the earth in the spirit of faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Let us offer our prayers for him. Because God has chosen to call our brother from this life to himself, we commit his body to the earth, for we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory, for he has risen the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our brother to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace him in peace and raise up his body on the last day. Let us just bow our heads and pray for God's blessings. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto Fitzclarence, O Lord, 
and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. And may his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of God which is beyond all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us stretch out our hands to the mortal remains of Fitzclarence. Fitzclarence, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and lead you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And when Lazarus is poor no longer, may you find eternal rest. Amen. Sisters and brothers, go in peace. But before our final hymn, just be seated for a moment, please. Right here, right here, right here. Thank you, Father. Um, before we end, we, the family of the departed Fitzclarence Waldrop, would just like to thank all of our extended family, his brothers, um, the Sarat family, the community of St. Francis of Assisi, all friends, the Lions Club, well wishers for supporting us during this very difficult time. Um, I think we have two final uh, brief comments on Daddy before we leave. I now invite Renal Waldrop to share his piece on Daddy. Uncle Rendo. These are reflection on the life of Fitzclarence Waldrop. When that comes to us, it rubs up of those who are near and dear to us. When that comes, our hearts are broken. But in life, that will always come. Indeed, there are two great mysteries, the mystery of birth and the mystery of death. We may never fully understand the birth process fully. We will never understand the great mystery of death. All of us live our lives daily with a certain knowledge that one day death will come. And to this family, death has come. Death has come and has taken away our dear brother Fitzclarence. I have the honor today to deliver some reflection on his life. Whilst it is indeed an honor, it is also a very painful duty that I have to carry out. My brother Fitzclarence was the third child born to our parents, David and Agnes Waldrop. As siblings, we grew up with love and affection. We shared a life, the little we had. We played, we flew kites, we ran away to swim in the river. We stole people mangoes and had fun as boys we grew up. My brother Fitzclarence was very close to me and indeed close towards the other siblings. Millicent, now deceased. Harold, now deceased. Clement, Merle, now deceased. And David and Anthony. He had a very kind and gentle spirit. He was serious, but sometimes he could be fun-loving. He had a very wicked sense of humor, which he would display sometimes for all to see. As a boy, he was very helpful. He would help my mother in taking care of the animals and tending to the crops. It is in these early years that he developed his love for agriculture, which later became his profession. He worked as an agricultural officer for years. 
My brother Fitzclarence was a devoted father to his two girls, Lorraine and Leanne. He took the time together with his wife to educate his two, his two daughters. He played a very active role in their lives, and today they owe a lot to their success, largely to the effort of their father. My brother and I often confide in each other. He was very often my rock of support. I could always count on him to give me proper advice. When Fitzclarence was a younger man, he was very involved in politics. He was an active member of the People's National Movement. That, to my mind, was his way of giving back to society. He found that his involvement in the, in the PNM party was his way of trying to better the lives of other persons. He worked very hard for the party, very often without reward, but although he might not have been rewarded here, I'm sure his work did not go unnoticed. His true reward was, was seeking the lives of persons who have assisted him improve. Fitzclarence was also a devout Roman Catholic. He was a deeply spiritual person. He believed in God, and he will pray often. He had a deep abiding faith in the Almighty, and during the time of his illness, he relied on that faith, that ever-binding faith, to him through the difficult times. I would miss my dear brother. I love him dearly. It is my fervent hope that as we reflect on his life today, that we find comfort in the knowledge that he has a better place. Let us be thankful for all the special moments that my brother has left us. I pray this is that his soul, I pray that he rest in peace and say to him, fly on high, dear brother, fly upwards into higher glory, into the blossom of God indeed. You have a place among the angels. Rest ever, brother, until we meet again. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks very much, Uncle Rendo. At this point, um, Minister Regis, who's representing the Prime Minister, had to depart, but we would like to invite either Ms. Laura Lazama or Mr. Ashton Ford to share some brief comments before we conclude. Here comes. Thank you, Father. Morning, everyone. I'm here, very sad indeed, but not unexpected because I knew he was ailing. But I knew Mr. Waldrop from a very young man. My, his father, he and my father were party colleagues. And I grew up in the PNM, as I say, and from the youth league. But he was known all over Trinidad as a PNM man. And only outside there we were reminded of the time in Central where he confronted all the opposition people unafraid because he was carrying the flag of the People's National Movement. And we have a lot of people like that in the party. But he stands out because he has served in many capacities. And his good friend, Ms. Rita Jennings, when in 2014, when we had the internal elections, despite they were not as very active, they still came out to support me as general secretary. And during my tenure, I could have always called for a little advice, and he would always be willing to respond. I knew his brothers, the police officer, and I always, they always talk highly of him, and he really played as an elder brother. So today I join with all of you gathered here today in paying tribute to a man who has served not only the PNM, 
He has, he has been good to his family. He was a family man. He was known as a family man. And therefore, he treated the members of the PNM as part of his family. And for this, we are ever grateful. Farewell, my friend, till we meet again. So let us stand and we have our recessional hymn.
Hi, Julian. So, one of the fondest memories of uh, Uncle Fitzy was when he came to London with Lorraine. The year I can't remember. Um, I remember it was a dark night, it was cold, and they were staying in a hotel in London, I believe in Russell Square. And it was really great to see them because uh, Selena and Leona were with me um, to meet him. And they were up in London for a Coco uh, Symporium. And uh, we chatted for a while and then we were going out. Um, I'm not sure if it's in the car, so Lorraine will probably be best able to tell me. We went out, and before going out, I, I will always remember Lorraine closing up his top button. Daddy, it's cold out there. You have to, to dress warm. And I thought that was really touching. So, and, you know, if, although the meeting was brief, you know, I was really glad to meet up with them. So, two more occasions, um, and it stuck in my head, was one when Uncle Fitzy, and I was the one who wanted that, he was a master of ceremonies for my mom and that was for her 90th birthday and the way he carried himself you know he was always articulate um, he's always able to speak on his feet which I really admire in fact of anyone but he was able to do that he was always able to make people feel at ease, you know, no matter what situation they're in. And he also spoke at Mum's uh, 95th birthday.
Surrender 